Energy density is the amount of energy stored in a given system or region of space per unit volume or mass, though the latter is more accurately termed specific energy. Often only the useful or extractable energy is measured, which is to say that chemically inaccessible energy such as rest mass energy is ignored. In cosmological and other general relativistic contexts, however, the energy densities considered are those that correspond to the elements of the stress energy tensor and therefore do include mass energy as well as energy densities associated with the pressures described in the next paragraph. Energy per unit volume has the same physical units as pressure, and in many circumstances is a synonym. For example, the energy density of a magnetic field may be expressed as a physical pressure, and the energy required to compress a compressed gas a little more may be determined by multiplying the difference between the gas pressure and the external pressure by the change in volume. In short, pressure is a measure of the enthalpy per unit volume of a system. System. A pressure gradient has a potential to perform work on the surroundings by converting enthalpy until equilibrium is reached. Introduction to Energy Density There are many different types of energy stored in materials, and it takes a particular type of reaction to release each type of energy. In order of the typical magnitude of the energy released, these types of reactions are nuclear, chemical, electrochemical, and electrical. Chemical reactions are used by animals to derive energy from food, and by automobiles to derive energy from gasoline. Electrochemical reactions are used by most mobile devices such as laptop computers and mobile phones to release the energy from batteries. Energy densities of common energy storage materials The following is a list of the thermal energy densities of commonly used or well-known energy storage materials. It doesn't include uncommon or experimental materials. Note that this list does not consider the mass of reactants commonly available such as the oxygen required for combustion or the energy efficiency in use. The following unit conversions may be helpful when considering the data in the table. 1 MJ 0.28 kWh 0.37 HPH Energy density in energy storage and in fuel. In energy storage applications the energy density relates the mass of an energy store to the volume of the storage facility, e.g., the fuel tank. The higher the energy density of the fuel, the more energy may be stored or transported for the same amount of volume. The energy density of a fuel per unit mass is called the specific energy of that fuel. In general an engine using that fuel will generate less kinetic energy due to inefficiencies in thermodynamic considerations, hence the specific fuel. Consumption of an engine will always be greater than its rate of production of the kinetic energy of motion. The greatest energy source by far is mass itself. This energy, E equals mc2, where m equals rho v, rho is the mass per unit volume, v is the volume of the mass itself and c is the speed of light. This energy, however, can be released only by the processes of nuclear fission, nuclear fusion, or the annihilation of some or all of the matter in the volume 5 by matter-antimatter collisions. Nuclear reactions cannot be realized by chemical reactions such as combustion, although greater matter densities can be achieved. The density of a neutron star would approximate the most dense system capable of matter-antimatter annihilation possible. A black hole, although denser than a neutron star, does not have an equivalent antiparticle form, but would offer the same 100% conversion rate of mass to energy in the form of Hawking radiation. In the case of relatively small black holes the power output would be tremendous. The highest density sources of energy aside from antimatter are fusion and fission. Fusion includes energy from the sun which will be available for billions of years but so far, sustained fusion power production continues to be elusive. Power from fission of uranium and thorium in nuclear power plants will be available for a many decades or even centuries because of the plentiful supply of the elements on Earth. 
though the full potential of this source can only be realized through breeder reactors, which are, apart from the BN600 reactor, not yet used commercially. Coal, gas, and petroleum are the current primary energy sources in the U.S., but have a much lower energy density. Burning local biomass fuels supplies household energy needs worldwide. Energy density does not tell you about energy conversion efficiency or embodied energy. Like any process occurring on a large scale, intensive energy use impacts the world. For example, climate change, nuclear waste storage, and deforestation may be some of the consequences of supplying our growing energy demands from hydrocarbon fuels, nuclear fission, or biomass. No single energy storage method boasts the best in specific power, specific energy, and energy density. Pocket's law describes how the amount of useful energy that can be obtained depends on how quickly we pull it out. To maximize both specific energy and energy density, one can compute the specific energy density of a substance by multiplying the two values together, where the higher the number, the better the substance is at storing energy efficiently. Gravimetric and volumetric energy density of some fuels and storage technologies. Note. Some values may not be precise because of isomers or other irregularities. See heating value for a comprehensive table of specific energies of important fuels. Note. Also it is important to realize that generally the density values for chemical fuels do not include the weight of oxygen required for combustion. This is typically two oxygen atoms per carbon atom, and one per two hydrogen atoms. The atomic weight of carbon and oxygen are similar, while hydrogen is much lighter than oxygen. Figures are presented this way for those fuels where in practice air would only be drawn in locally to the burner. This explains the apparently lower energy density of materials that already include their own oxidizer, where the mass of the oxidizer in effect adds dead weight, and absorbs some of the energy of combustion to dissociate and liberate oxygen to continue the reaction. This also explains some apparent anomalies, such as the energy density of a sandwich appearing to be higher than that of a stick of dynamite. Energy densities ignoring external components This table lists energy densities of systems that require external components, such as oxidizers or a heat sink or source. These figures do not take into account the mass and volume of the required components as they are assumed to be freely available and present in the atmosphere. Such systems cannot be compared with self-contained systems. These values may not be computed at the same reference conditions. Most of them seem to be higher heating value. Divide joule meter minus 3 by 109 to get MJ L. Divide MJ L by 3.6 to get KWH L. Energy density of electric and magnetic fields. Electric and magnetic fields store energy. In a vacuum, the energy density is given by where E is the electric field and B is the magnetic field. The solution will be in joules per cubic meter. In the context of magnetohydrodynamics, the physics of conductive fluids, the magnetic energy density behaves like an additional pressure that adds to the gas pressure of a plasma. In normal substances, the energy density is where D is the electric displacement field and H is the magnetizing field.